Hello, I'm Ryan with Trex, and I'm here to walk you through how to install Trex Enhanced decking, fascia, and railing on this 12 foot by 16 foot frame. This is a great size and offers plenty of room for entertaining. Starting with a completed pressure treated lumber frame, today we'll be finishing the project with Trex Enhanced Naturals Rocky Harbor decking and fascia, paired with Trex Enhanced railing in classic white. Let's roll up our sleeves and get started. Once you've verified everything you ordered has arrived on site and brought it to the area of the deck build, you're ready to set up your cutting area. I find that positioning my sawhorses so that they're parallel with the orientation of the deck boards makes cutting easier. As for hand tools, the must-haves are a hammer and rubber mallet, a 7 inch or 8 inch speed square, a pencil or marker, a chalk line with blue, orange, purple, or white chalk, a 25 foot tape measure, a utility knife, and several clamps to act as a helping hand. As for power tools, the must-haves are a drill with wood drill bits and driver bit tips, plus a driver extension, a circular saw with a fresh blade, a jigsaw with a fresh wood cutting blade, and a miter saw with a fresh blade. While this video isn't about deck framing, I do want to point out a couple things before we get started installing our first deck board, which for me is always at the outside of the deck frame. First, I want to point out how we're supporting our picture frame border. Here we've added two joists as blocking, one to support half the picture frame board and the other to support the deck boards coming into the picture frame at a right angle. These are called structural blocking joists. Blocking joists are secured on both ends with Simpson Strong Tie 7 inch angles or L70Z angles. And second, that we've applied Trex Protect joist and beam tape. Trex Protect acts to extend the life of the frame by sealing around fasteners as they penetrate the pressure treated lumber, as well as minimizing moisture into the frame overall. As you can see, I'm using the Trex Enhanced board without a grooved edge for the outside perimeter of the deck. Picture frame borders and stair treads are some of the two most common applications for square edge boards. I built the frame taking into account the thickness of the Trex fascia and the overhang of the picture frame border, which means my picture frame board, which is my first board, will overhang the rim joist on both ends by an inch and a quarter. I like to work from the outside rim back towards the house. That way, I'll always have a full board out front where it's most noticeable. To simplify cutting around these posts, I pre-cut and notched the first two boards. Before I start measuring and cutting the first board, I like to install some 12 inch pieces of scrap wood to serve as blocks which help me maintain a consistent overhang the entire length of the board. In this case, the blocks will be an inch and a quarter wide. Rather than measuring for the length of the picture frame board, with the inch and a quarter block in place, I can clamp the square edge board in place on top of the rim joist. Now, it's as easy as marking the end of the board at 45 degrees to the block. It's important to get a clean cut on the mitered corners. For this, you have two options, a miter saw or a circular saw. Either work, but both work best with a new or very sharp blade. Once I've cut the full board to length, I then clamp it to the post. Now I'm ready to mark the notches around the posts. The width of the notch will be the width of the post plus one quarter inch on each side of the post. The depth of the notch will be from the edge of my inch and a quarter block minus one quarter inch. Why oversize the notch by a quarter inch? To allow for any expansion or contraction of the frame and to some degree the decking. Plus, it just makes installing the deck board easier. Rather than trying to force the jigsaw blade to turn a sharp corner, I drill a hole in one inside corner that's larger than the blade. This allows me to easily turn the corner and continue with my cut. I like to make the first two cuts with a circular saw, then finish the notch cuts with a jigsaw. Since the notch cuts won't be seen, these cuts don't need to be exact or perfectly straight. The oversized notch will be hidden under the rail post sleeve and skirt. After I attach some more inch and a quarter blocks to the outside of the rim joist, I flushed the edge and ends of my first boards to the blocks and clamped it in place. It's important to use an approved composite deck screw when fastening Trex decking through the surface or face of the board, which is what's necessary to fasten your picture frame board. These screws have a double set of threads that promote a clean and finished look. A standard wood deck fastener will create an undesirable result, so be sure to use the right fastener. 
Fasten the picture frame board with two screws at each joist, one at least an inch from the inside and the other on the outside, making sure you're always into the rim joist below. To avoid splitting, even though I'm at least an inch from the edge and end, I like to pre-drill. I use an eighth inch wood drill bit just through the deck board itself, but not into the frame. We're now ready for our second board, which I'll also cut to the exact length and mark and cut the notches for our railing support posts. Determining the length is as simple as measuring from block to block, then subtracting 11 and a quarter inches in this case. This takes into account I'll have a five and a half inch picture frame board on each end, which equals 11 inches, as well as an eighth inch gap between the deck board and the picture frame board on each end. This allows for movement in the frame as well as expansion and contraction of the deck board. From here, I just repeated the process of marking and notching. Since the picture frame board doesn't have a groove to accommodate our hidden fastener, I ripped a piece of wood for a required quarter inch gap, positioned the end of the board to five and five eighths inches in from the block, then fastened the outside edge of the second board with an approved exposed fastener. With the second deck board secured, I can now switch to the Trex Hideaway Hidden Fastening System for most of the remaining deck boards. The look of a deck installed with the Trex Hideaway Hidden Fastening System is incredibly clean and refined, so it's no wonder most Trex decking is installed using this system. The system consists of a glass-filled nylon clip with a preset stainless steel fastener that provides the required quarter inch gap between each groove board. Each bucket includes 360 self-gapping universal deck fasteners, which will complete a 200 square foot deck, framed at 16 inches on center, similar to this one. The bucket also includes 16 start clips, a drive bit, and instructions. There are a couple methods for installing the Trex Hideaway Hidden Fastener. First is the Trex Universal Fastener installation tool. The fastener tool holds the fastener vertically and hands-free. It also provides a means for applying some pressure on the board during installation. The tool allows you to set the screw completely in a single step, saving time. Once the screw is set, you just pull the tool away and move on to the next joist. A second method uses a narrow scrap piece of groove Trex decking to trap the fastener between the scrap piece and the leading edge of the deck board. With this method, it's recommended that you initially only seat the screw partway down on the first pass, which means you'll need to return for a second step of fully seating the screw after you've secured the next board. It's not my preferred method, but if you didn't purchase the fastener tool, this is a legitimate option. Now I just repeat the process as I work my way back towards the house. For fastening, I simply make sure each board is snug to the hidden fastener before installing the next one. You can either start in the middle of the board and work your way toward each end, or you can work from one end to the other. It's purely a matter of personal preference. If you're working with another person, I recommend starting with a clip in the center, then one in each end, then installing the remaining intermediate clips. Once I install these last two feel boards, I'll be ready to cut in my picture frame border on each side of the deck. Just like the first two boards, and those in the middle around the posts, I cut the boards to length and notched for my rail posts, checking the placement and secured the second to last board. Using a bar to pry the last board in place, I fastened the edge closest to the house using a Trex approved color match composite deck screw. Now it's time for us to install our picture frame boards on the sides of the deck. You can always use a chalk box like this one and attach the line to the ends of our pre-cut boards and snap a line. While cutting along a chalk line is common, it is a cut that requires a high level of skill to execute well. If you do choose the chalk line method, blue, purple, orange, and white chalk are all fine, but never black or red chalk, as they'll permanently stain the decking. Here's a trick to keep the cut straight, regardless of your skill level. Pull the guard up and set the saw blade against the pre-cut deck boards. Mark the edge of the saw shoe Shim a 2x4 so that it's even with the mark. The 2x4 will serve as a guide. Now firmly clamp the 2x4 to the rail posts. Provided you keep the shoe of the saw tight against the 2x4 guides, your finished cut will be as straight as the guide itself. Lift up the guard enough to clear the deck board. Slide the saw shoe flush with the 2x4 guides and let down the guard. Gently squeeze the trigger and begin cutting. 
making sure that the shoe is staying tight against the 2x4 guides. Take it slow, it's ideal if you make the cut in one motion. Clean up the area thoroughly because we're ready to move on to the next step. For the two side picture frame boards, measuring and cutting is very similar to the front picture frame board. Once I'm satisfied with the miter cut and overall length, I just repeat the process of marking and notching for my rail posts, like I did across the front of the deck. As for the end gaps, it depends on the outside temperature during installation. Today is one of the warmest days of the year for the area, so I'll leave a slight gap at the 45 degree cut and an eighth inch gap at the wall. Make sure to keep the required eighth inch into edge gap we planned for in our layout. Just as before, I'm using the Trex approved composite deck screws to secure the picture frame border to the frame at a maximum of 16 inches on center. With the picture frame border done, I'm ready to move on to installing the decking on the stairs. There's a particular order I like to follow when decking and cladding the stairs, and that's install the fascia on the outside stringers, install the riser, and lastly, install the treads. The ideal time to mark and cut your fascia for your outside stringers is when you're done cutting the stringers themselves. At that time, it's as easy as tracing the entire stringer onto the back of the fascia, using a stringer as a pattern, then cutting it with circular and jigsaws. Trying to measure the fascia to length after the stringers are installed is quite challenging. Before I installed my stair stringers, I added a 2x4 block to the second stringer in on both sides. This will support my picture frame border. Each deck board needs full bearing on its own 2x, so the block is a simple and effective way of satisfying the requirement for a picture frame tread. With the stringer fascia cut, I pre-drilled for the fascia screws and flushed the top of the fascia with a stringer, and in this case, used eight Trex approved fascia screws to secure the fascia. The rise on my stairs is six and a half inches, so I ripped down the enhanced fascia to match the rise. For the width, I flushed up one end of the riser, marked the other end, and cut it to length. I positioned the riser, then used two composite deck screws per stringer to attach. Then I just repeat this exact process as I work my way down the stairs. The last step in the sequence will be to install the stair treads. The best choice for stair treads is the non-groove deck board, sometimes called a square edge board. Like the deck, I'll picture frame the stair treads as well, which makes for a consistent look. Really, measuring and cutting for picture frame treads is basically the same as picture framing the deck. I'll start by measuring the three pieces that make up the picture frame portion of the tread. First, I need the width of the outer tread, plus one inch, which will give me a half inch overhang on each side. Next, I need the length of the return pieces, plus three quarters of an inch for my overhang across the front, which is required by code in most areas. I want to make sure the corners of the picture frame treads are aligned and spaced slightly and check the overhang. Just like the risers, stair treads need to be fastened with two approved composite deck screws per stringer. I then measured for the rear tread, subtracting from my eighth inch gap on each end, then cut and fastened. With all of the decking installed, we're ready to move on to video two of three, installing Trex Enhanced Fascia. To view more detailed, step-by-step -step videos on how to build an entire deck from A to Z, visit trex.com forward slash academy. Thanks for watching. Although you don't see the fascia while you're on the deck, it definitely adds a lot of value when you're looking back at the house. On this deck, we'll be using one piece of 1 by 12 by 12 foot enhanced Rocky Harbor on each side, with a full and partial piece across the front. Sometimes the perimeter of the frame can become warped before you install the fascia, so be sure to measure both the top and bottom of the rim joist and cut accordingly. Also, remember to leave a gap on the ends appropriate for the temperature during installation. After trimming one rough cut end of the board, I'm now measuring for the short point of my 45 degree angle at the other end. I'll do this by marking on the back side of the fascia. After I marked the back side of the fascia, I set my miter saw to 45 degrees and made the cut. Next, I pre-drilled holes for the fascia screws that attach the fascia to the frame. All Trex approved fascia screws utilize a pre-drill bed that creates a pocket for the shank of the screw, allowing the fascia to float independent of the framing lumber. Three fascia screws are installed two inches in from each end and three more at a maximum of 18 inches on center throughout the length of the fascia. All right, the fascia is cut to length and pre-drilled, so I'm almost ready to attach it to the frame. 
Because I'm working alone, I made a temporary support from wood scraps to support each end while I adjust the fascia into position. I clamped the fascia temporarily so that I could make my adjustments, checking both ends, making sure I leave a slight gap for shrinkage of the wood frame as well as movement of the fascia. Once I finish fastening the front, I'll just repeat the process on both sides of the deck. That wraps it up for this video on how to install Trex Enhanced Fascia. Join me for video 3 of 3 where I'll talk about installing Trex Enhanced Railing on the main part of the deck as well as the stairs. To view more detailed step-by-step -step videos on how to build an entire deck from A to Z, visit trex.com forward slash academy. Thanks for watching. Welcome to video 3 of 3, where I'll show you how to install the Trex Enhanced Railing System. The first step for installing a Trex Enhanced Rail System is to measure and cut my post sleeves to the desired length. During framing, I typically install my pressure treated posts so that it's 38 to 39 inches above the finished deck surface for a 36 inch top rail height. Post sleeves are sold in 48 inch lengths, which will accommodate both horizontal and stair applications. For horizontal applications, I cut these to 40 inches, which is most common. We'll install the stair rail posts and railing shortly. Those posts will be a little longer. For this cut, the miter saw produces the cleanest cut. The next step is to install the post skirts and post sleeves in that order. If you put on the skirt second, you might scuff the post sleeve as you slide the skirt over the sleeve. Now it's time to get started on our rail sections. In our railing kit, we have our top and bottom rails, our balusters, a hardware kit, an adjustable foot block, and instructions. To support the bottom rail at the correct height, I made three blocks at three and three quarter inches wide. At three and three quarter inches, we've preset the correct height of the top rail at just over 36 inches, which is necessary to comply with the building code. Next, I set the bottom rail between the post sleeves. I then position the rail so that, one, the distance between the last baluster hole on each end must be a minimum of 1 and 9 16 inches to allow sufficient space for the bracket, and two, the distance is the same on each end, which ensures the space between the last baluster and the post sleeve will be identical. Now I just mark the side of the rail with a pencil. With the bottom rail marked, I can now cut both the bottom and top rail for this section to length, which I'll do on the miter saw. Using a fresh blade really helps make a clean cut. Since this is your first rail, make a practice cut or two near the end to get the feel for how the material is going to cut. Next, I drill the 3 16 inch hole in the center of the bottom rail in length and width for the foot block, which I'll put in later. To allow water to escape, Drill two additional holes evenly spaced on each side of the foot block. I then position the brackets from the hardware kit on each end of the top rail on the same side as the baluster holes using the three number eight by one inch self-drilling screws which are provided. Make sure the brackets don't extend past the end of the rail. If they do, you'll create an undesirable gap between the post and the rail. Next, using the same fastener, I attach the brackets to the bottom rail, but this time to the opposite side of the baluster holes. So far, we've drilled holes in the underside of the bottom rail for our foot block and drainage. The rails are now cut to length with an even margin between the last baluster hole and the end of the rails, and our brackets are attached with the proper screws. The next steps are to insert the balusters and then attach the rails to the post. For this next step, on a clean and flat surface, I laid the bottom rail on its side. I then used a scrap piece of one inch decking to support the balusters as I inserted them into the bottom rail. Starting on one end, I fed the balusters into the top rail. Once they were fully seated in both top and bottom rails, I used a ratchet strap just to snug the two rails together. I then set the rail section on the three and three quarter inch blocks and centered one end at a time on the post. To help hold the section in place, I used a clamp which only needs to be snug so that I don't damage the balusters or post leaf. Slowly drive the provided three inch wood screws through the holes in the bracket and into the post sleeve and post. No need to pre-drill, but do go slowly and set your drill clutch to a low setting. If you overdrive the fastener, 
you'll see the post sleeve distort and potentially crack the sleeve. Foot blocks are required to help support every section of Trex Enhance railing. The adjustability of these foot blocks makes them very easy to install. I first turned the turn mount so that it could easily fit under the bottom rail. Then I positioned it so that the nub was engaged with the hole I previously drilled in the rail. Next, I twisted the turn mount until it was fully tightened in between the deck surface and the rail. With the mounting hole facing outwards, I installed one number eight wood screw, which was provided and pulled the sleeve down to cover the turn mount and screw. And finally, the last step in the process is to install the post caps, which is as simple as applying some silicone or PVC adhesive to the tab inside the cap and to the top of the post sleeve and taping down the cap while the adhesive cures. Installing the stair railing is my last step in this project. Trex Enhanced stair railing also comes in a kit, but there are some differences. Let's have a look. Much like the horizontal kit, we have a top and bottom rail, which have elongated baluster holes to accommodate the angle of the stairs, powder coated black aluminum balusters, a hardware kit and installation instructions. Inside the hardware kit, we have rail brackets plus adapters to accommodate common stair angles, as well as fasteners to connect it all together. Lastly, we have a foot block. Before we begin marking and cutting our rails, I'll install the lower post skirt and temporarily install the lower post sleeve. Don't cut that lower post sleeve to length just yet, We'll make that cut later. Push the bottom of the post sleeve out so that the sleeve is touching the wood post, then clamp a scrap piece of deck board to the underside of the bottom rail. This will act as a spacer to elevate the rail section to the code compliant finished height. Temporarily position the rail so that the holes are approximately an equal distance to the post sleeve on each end of the rail. This distance needs to be a minimum of two inches to accommodate the top rail bracket. Using a single clamp, Temporarily secure the bottom rail to the side of the bottom post sleeve. Next, place a baluster at each end of the bottom rail to make it easier to measure the distance from the baluster to the post sleeve. With a baluster at each end of the bottom rail, place the top rail on the balusters. Position the top rail so that the holes are at equal distance to the post sleeve on each end of the rail. Now, clamp the top rail to the outside of the post sleeves. With the space between the post sleeve and the baluster at the top rail set, now I adjust the bottom rail to match the top. Next, mark for my cuts at both ends of both rails with a pencil. I also mark the lower and upper post sleeves at the top of both rails. This way, we'll know at what height to place the rail when we return to attach it to the post sleeve. The next step is to cut both rails to length. Set the bottom rail to the lines marked previously on the bottom post and temporarily support the bottom rail with a clamp. Before we mark and drill for the foot block, add the stair adapter to the top of the foot block. Since the foot block extends to a maximum height of four inches, we set the bottom rail in place and find and mark the location for the foot block near the center of the bottom rail, but no greater than four inches from the tread to the bottom of the bottom rail. Drill a 3 16th inch hole at the foot block location, centered at the width of the bottom rail, which we'll use when we install the foot block later. Start the hole at a 90 degree angle, then pivot the drill to roughly match the angle of the stairs. Now that we've drilled the hole for our foot block, we're ready to install the rail brackets. The major difference between installing the rail brackets for the stairs versus the horizontal railing is the addition of these adapter brackets. The adapter bracket snaps into the standard bracket and is labeled top for the upper post connection and bottom for the lower post connection. Set the clutch of your drill to a low setting and go slow so that you don't snap the stainless steel screws. Make sure the bracket is flush or slightly shy of the end of the rail. For the top rail, using the one inch screws from the hardware kit, attach the assembled top stair bracket to the side with the baluster holes. On the bottom rail, attach the assembled bottom stair bracket to the side without baluster holes. Next, we'll use the mark we made earlier, which signifies the top of the top rail to determine where we'll cut our rail post sleeve. We want the distance between the bottom of our lower post cap to be the same as the upper post cap. That distance on this deck is two and a half inches. The post cap has a depth of one and a half inches. Therefore, we'll cut the post sleeve a total of four inches above our mark. With our length established, I can mark and cut our lower post sleeve. For this cut, the miter saw produces the cleanest cut. With our rails cut to length, brackets installed, and bottom post sleeve cut to length, it's time to connect our rails to the posts. 
Set the bottom rail in place so that it aligns with the mark made earlier on the bottom post. Place a clamp below the rail bracket on the lower post. Place a clamp and a scrap piece of 2x4 above the rail at the upper post. The rail should align with the mark made previously on the upper post. These keep the rail at the correct height while we're securing the rails to the post sleeves. Next, center the bottom rail on the post sleeve. Because the screws will be going in at an angle, I find pre-drilling with an eighth inch bit helpful. To prevent the drill chuck from marring the sides of the rails, I use a driver extension for pre-drilling as well as installing the provided three inch wood screws. Insert all the balusters into the bottom rail then lower the top rail down onto the balusters. I find that lifting and rotating the balusters up into the top rail helps speed the process. Once all the balusters are in, then I make sure the top rail is all the way seated and everything is snug. Just as we did with the bottom rail, place clamps under and above the rails. Next, center the top rail on the post sleeve. Again, using the driver extension, pre-drill for the provided three inch wood screws. Go slow when installing the wood screws and be careful not to over tighten. I position the foot block so that the nub was engaged with the hole I previously drilled in the rail. Next, I twisted the turn mount until it was fully tightened in between the deck surface and the rail. With the mounting hole facing outward, I installed one number eight wood screw, which was provided, and pulled the sleeve down to cover the turn mount and screw. A little silicone adhesive on the tab inside the cap, some tape, to hold them in place while the adhesive cures and we're done. And remember, Trex is here to make your deck installation smooth and simple so you can spend more time enjoying your new outdoor space. To view more detailed step-by-step -step videos on how to build an entire deck from A to Z, visit trex.com forward slash academy. Thanks for watching.